we and our world are always changing. We grow physically, cognitively, emotionally and spiritually and this changes us. And we age and this changes us. In our world, there are political, social and technological shifts that humans contribute to and that impact us. Change is pretty constant for us. So, how can we relate to a God who stays the same? We've been in a series here at Northern that began a few weeks ago, thinking about the attributes of God and how improving our understanding of God can strengthen our relationship with him. And this morning, we're taking a look at the attribute of consistency. Now, when I saw this topic, I thought, yeah, you know what? That sounds straightforward enough. David is laughing at me. <clears throat> That'll be a good way to kind of ease myself back into preaching. Ah, how wrong I was. <laughs> so before I go any further, let's, um, let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your ways. God, I pray that this morning here we would learn together from you. God, above all, we we pray that you would be glorified here in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. There is something about God that is unknown to us. God has gone to a lot of trouble to make himself known, but at the end of the day, there are things about God that we just don't understand. Because God is God, and we're not. And that's how it is. And in a few weeks, someone will be sharing um, about transcendence. That's that word, transcendence, God, otherness. And they'll go into that a bit more. But for this morning, it's important that we identify that there are things that we don't know about God. Is that fair? Can we agree to that? Is that okay? Great. (laughs) But we believe that God is good. And over the next several weeks, we're going to be exploring more of what that goodness looks like. So it'll look like love and justice and integrity. And these are all qualities of God that someone else will look at in a few weeks. So that leaves us a very small, maybe small, important, very important piece this morning. And that is that God is always good. God is consistent and unchanging in his goodness. And this morning, we're going to think about how do we know that and why does it matter? Always means that God doesn't change. He won't change. This is really hard for us to get our heads around because, as I said at the beginning, we are constantly in change. In Psalm 102, the psalmist writes, um, speaking about God, Long ago you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you will remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing, and you will change them like a garment and discard them. But you are always the same. You will live forever. The children of your people will live in security, and their children's children will thrive in your presence. The image that this psalmist is presenting to us is that while people grow old and perish, the world changes, God remains. He's always the same. He lives forever. And this brings the psalmist comfort because in the face of adversity, God's consistency offers us security. God is perfect and whole. He neither grows nor ages. He doesn't increase or decrease. God is constant. We talked about that a few weeks ago when um, David spoke about the omnipresence of God. So if you haven't heard that one, go back and listen to that one. God doesn't change, and this is a good thing because he isn't impacted by, the, by other forces and he, he doesn't have a bad day um, where his character shifts on a whim. He's constant. There are a lot of um, theological arguments around this statement and right now you might have a bunch of questions in your mind. Good. I am sure that they are good questions. Write them down and write them down on your response card and at the top, label it, you asked for it, series. David is speaking on in July. (laughs) Um, If you're listening on a podcast or at home, write them down, put them in an email, send them to David. (laughs) There is a series in July um, where we will be looking at things that um, you put to us, put put to the community around um, 
what are the topics that challenge you, challenge you, you want to hear about? But aside from that, we need to acknowledge that part of what is unknown to us about God is how things that seem incongruous to us, things that don't fit together, things that are contradictions, can be true of God and that we know from Scripture. Let me give you some examples. God is constant and yet moved by our prayer. God is constant and yet he engages with us to bring about his plan. God is constant and yet there are passages in scripture that speak of God changing his mind. What do we do with that? I think we start by reflecting on what it is about God that is constant and unchanging. When I shared this topic, um, the topic of this message with Greg without any context, I asked him if he could explain to me the difference between something being constant and something being consistent. And he said, look at the beach. The waves are constant. There is always one coming, but the waves are not consistent. Every wave is different. You know when it's coming, but you never know what it will be like. You never know if the wave is going to give you the ride of your life or leave you with a mouthful of sand. And that is not what we experience with God. We can trust God to be present, but we can also trust what God will be like because God is always good. God is consistently good. God has um, revealed his values and his nature, his character to us over time and we know that God's nature is very consistent, that he is the same again and again and again. And this is actually really remarkable. The more I have sat with this this week, the more it amazes me. Scripture, the Bible as we have it, was written by a really large number of authors over a huge time span, and yet the God revealed to us across all the stories in the Bible is remarkably consistent. Consistent with how God himself revealed his nature to Moses in Exodus 34. In that story, Moses um, had gone back up Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments. You've heard that story. <clears throat> and then this is what God says. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and stood there with him and he called out his own name, Yahweh. And the Lord passed in front of Moses calling out, Yahweh the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion and sin, but I do not excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren. The, entirely, the entire family is affected, even children to the third and fourth generations. God is compassionate and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness, offering forgiveness and bringing justice. Those words, if you think about them, also describe Jesus. Do they not? God calls himself Yahweh, I am. The very definition of constancy. That statement, I am, ring bells, rings bells for those of us who spent some time reading John's gospel. In John's biography of Jesus, he records Jesus making seven I am statements. If you're new to faith or you haven't read through it before, I encourage you to read John's gospel and look out for those statements. In them, Jesus is talking about himself and God. And one of those statements was in the passage that Rhonda read out for us. Thank you for doing that, Rhonda. Um, Jesus, says, um, oh, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. But I want us to think about something else from that passage that Rhonda read for us. Jesus says that if we know him, if we've seen him, we know and see the Father. There's consistency between the God who spoke the world into existence and Jesus who speaks health into sickness, restoration into things that are broken and life into death. Everything we see in Jesus shows us what God is like. Jesus is completely consistent in his representation of God. Let me say that again. Jesus is completely consistent in his representation of God. God, as he tells us about himself in Exodus 34, right through the Old Testament, and then more vividly in Jesus, we see consistency in God's character. God is gracious. God acts to bring justice. God loves. God is on a mission to restore creation. God has been the same 
acting from this character for a very, very long time. Now, there has to be at least one person. I'm not going to ask you to put your hands up. But there must be at least one person thinking, but what about, what about this or what about that action or statement that we find in Scripture? And those questions are valid. But those questions exist because the majority of Scripture is consistent and these are outliers. Those stories or those passages that come to mind, the reason they stand out to you is because the rest of Scripture is so consistent. Maybe it's not a piece of scripture. It might be your own experience of God or God's people that doesn't align to the nature of God as you read about it in scripture. And I want to be really careful here because there's a risk when we deal with big theological topics like this one that the answers provided in a a format like this can feel trite and I really don't want them to be. This gets really personal really quickly When we read something in scripture that doesn't align with who we know God to be, our job is to look more deeply, to take that to God and to let the Holy Spirit teach us. When we experience things in the world and we feel like, how could God let that happen or how could God not do something about that? It's our job to ask deeply, to take it to God and to let him speak to us. I was doing some reading this week and I came across a quote that I decided I would share with you. I'm going to put it on the screen and I'm going to read it out for those of you who are listening. The identity of the biblical God is not rigid or static. Rather, he's a persona whose identity emerges as dynamic, surprising and occasionally paradoxical, requiring the reader a dialectical process of recognition. It's from a textbook, just so you know. I'm I'm going to unpack it in a minute. So the people, I was going to like not read it out. I was just going to put it on the screen, but I thought for people listening at home, we'd read it out. When a depiction borders on inconsistency, the interpreter must grasp it as a surprising manifestation. It's like they used a thesaurus when they wrote it, isn't it? Of the one already known. When a depiction is polemical, the interpreter must recognise that the identity of Yahweh involves elements of paradox. So let me tell you what this says. <laughs> this is what they're saying. God is not predictable or rigid or static. God, as we find him in the Bible, is active. He's surprising. And occasionally, he has two two parts of him that we kind of have to hold together, not knowing how they sit together. And so when we've come across those things, we come across something that feels inconsistent. And I would say this is true of experiences also. If you have an experience of God that doesn't feel consistent... We take hold of that unexpected, um, that as an unexpected expression of the qualities we already know. We take it to God and we say, how could this look like love? How could this look like justice? How could this look like grace? What are you doing, God? God is, is big enough to handle your questions, so it's okay to ask them. And this process draws us closer to God. As we seek out an event or a teaching in the Bible, how, how that can be an expression of the God that we know. The point of this series, the whole point of this series that we're doing about looking at the qualities of God is to draw us into a deeper relationship with who God is. You can ask him these questions. It's okay to do that. So earlier I had three examples of the challenges that we have and can have, to understanding God is constant. God is constant, yet moved by, by our prayer. God is constant and engages with us to bring about his plan. God is constant, and there are passages in scripture that speak to God changing his mind. But God's consistent goodness responds to these. God is consistently responsive. We see this throughout scripture. Responding to prayer is part of part of who he is. God is consistently relational. He doesn't need to, but he chooses to work with people. He chooses to work with creation. He chooses to enter our world ultimately in the person of Jesus. And God is consistent in his offer of redemption. God is consistent. He's revealed himself to us and his plans to us. And yet sometimes we can feel like we don't know where God is, what he's doing, 
And that's because we can't see things from God's point of view. In his letter to the church in Corinth, Paul writes to them, describing love to them. And immediately after that, in chapter 13, verse 12, Paul says this, Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything perfectly. We will see with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. Even though we can't see it perfectly or understand completely, we can still trust God. And we can trust God because he is always good. He's not just good, he's always good. We can trust him to be himself perfectly. Now there is one last thing about this. I wanted to flag. When we are consistent, it's Mother's Day, I think about consistent parenting, you know, it's important. Sorry, I, it genuinely is important. That sounded like I was mocking it. I wasn't. Um, it is important. It's really hard though if, um, if you, you know, consistent managers, consistent employees, consistent teachers. It's hard work, isn't it, being consistent? But we tend to equate that with being predictable. If you're a consistent parent, your kids know what to expect. <clears throat> we can expect that God is good, but God is not predictable in his actions. God is gracious and compassionate and merciful. He is slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. And because God doesn't change, we know that he will always be these things. He doesn't get tired of it. He doesn't get better at it. This is who God always is. God will always be this way, we can trust that. And his character will always guide his actions. Which is why when we don't understand an action, we take it back and we say, how could this be an expression of who you are? Because those individual actions in history and our interactions with people are not predictable because we don't see ourselves and the world as God does. We know that God loves people and he desires wholeness, but he doesn't heal everyone. I don't know why. We know that God is consistently responsive, but sometimes he can be quiet for a really, really long time. So where does that get us to this morning? Hopefully it gets us somewhere. God's consistency offers us security in a world where change is certain. We can know who God is for sure. He is a God who remains. We have a good God who can be our anchor, our lighthouse, as we sang about this morning, our rock. He is steady ground to build our faith and life upon. And God can be trusted. We might not know everything there is to know about God. We don't. We can't, actually. But what we do know is a true reflection of him. We can trust God to be good. And God is not a machine. God is consistent and stable in his character, but it doesn't make his actions predictable or transactional. God is consistently relational. We're having some, we're going to have some time uh, to reflect <laughs> um, now and give you some space to take the things on your heart to God right now. And I've put some questions up here, but you might have others. Um, these are just to help to help guide you, to guide your reflection response. Have a think about how God has acted consistently with you. Where do you see God's goodness and um, showing up in your life consistently? Where do you see his care? Where do you see God's goodness at work in those around you? How does God's consistency Deepen your trust in him. And are there any questions from today's topic that this this topic raises for you? I'm sure there are. Um, But take those to God now. Spend some time now. I'm just going to play some music and and then I'm going to come back and pray for us. Thanks, Stephen. (laughs) 